Mr. Dallas. <laughs> Gordon, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Very festive, Sona. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, no expense spared for the um, very festive sauna. I'd like to call it a tasting room, but let's call it uh, sauna. But Gordon, hello. I'm, hello. I'm really looking forward to this tonight. Yeah, no, it's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it to, as well. And we've got some guests this evening. So without further ado, let's bring them in. So first of all, we've got our malt master. We've got Mr. John oh. Glass, who <laughs> is our... Good evening. Man who makes our wonderful whiskies. John, welcome to your Facebook Live debut, I think, is it? Yeah, for, uh, internet tasting debut. Do I have no idea what I'm in for. But <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take it easy on you. We'll take <laughs> it easy on you. Really great you could make it. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. We've wow. also got two other guests. Uh, we have um, Philip Walker and we also have Callum Friel. So let's welcome those gentlemen in as well. Uh, oh, Callum, didn't you? <laughs> Callum, how are you? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Um, and we decided we wanted to bring on um, a little bit of some 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 fans of Glengoyne because we can we can talk about Glengoyne and pontificate about Glengoyne, of course. But fans take a different perspective. They are fans of the whiskey that John makes and the, the team make wonderful spirit and all that. But I want to just ask Callum first, Callum. What is it that got you into whiskey? What is it that makes you love Glen Goyne? Well, the thing was, um, my 18th birthday, I was given a bottle of the 10 year old um, for my birthday, and it's the first whiskey I'd ever tasted. You know, not, not something the normal 18 year old <laughs> uni is drinking. Um, but, you know, I thought this is phenomenal stuff, really nice. And then my birthday's quite close to Christmas, and that Christmas, my dad took me to the distillery and we did the um, the gold medal parade tour, I think you called mm, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The kind of 12 and then the, the, the 15 test at the time and the 18 and the, the 21. I think we also got a wee teapot as well at the very end. Oh, and it was, a teapot. Yeah, we were a teapot. And it, was, it was fantastic. It was really great. It was very early on a Sunday morning and my mum, poor mum, had to come and um, <laughs> drive me and my dad to the distillery um, at <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we were sort of stumbling about the Waitrose and Mogai after it, so it was a good, it was a great morning. But that was my introduction to, yeah. to fantastic. And you've and you've got a nice selection of Glen Goins behind you. That's great. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Philip, how about you? You, um, what about you? How about you? I mean, I know, I know you're obviously are sort of in the hospitality trade, but what about you and Glen Goyne? So my first experience at Glen Goyne was a holiday many years ago to uh, Loch Lomond, um, over uh, to Loch Lomond and visited the distillery. Um, I think it was the 10 year old that first struck to me, um, really, really enjoyed it and then uh, started trying other stuff and still went back to the Glen Goyne 10 um, originally when I was my first introduction to whiskey, then moved up and moved up and I must say now probably uh, the location's amazing, but probably the 18 and the 21 are uh, two of my favourite whiskies. Mm -hmm. uh, the 10 year old is just a stunning welcome drink uh, to anybody in mm -hmm. a really nice introductory whiskey. And that's what I mm -hmm. teach people if they're coming and wanting to try something. That's what I get them to try first as a 10 year old. Uh, but yeah, that's what that was my introduction to whiskey uh, to whiskey as well was Glengoyne and really enjoyed it ever since. Well, I can just say, what? Philip and Callum, you may be joining the ambassadorial team at some point. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Gordon, Gordon, we just say hello to some of the people. Of course, that's exactly what I was going to go. On you go. Our, our friend across Minneapolis, Peter, PTP, Peter Newbert, said hello there. Uh, we've got Ron from San Marco in Texas. We'll go from the, oh. the other way first. Um, then we've got Giri. Uh, Giri is in, where is Giri? He's in Sweden, or Thomas, I should say, is in Sweden. Um, Marco, hello there, he's in Switzerland We can't go through everyone, Jennifer Beatty Hello from Jordan Hill We've got um, Jordan John Hill. Hill. Craig, Dougie, hello um, We've got Douglas in the Drum Chapel Which is a lovely area of Glasgow If you've never been, it's well worth a visit uh, Jeannie was from the Czech Republic We've got Snoops, Mark, Cato, John Mike as well I'm not getting through all of you, but thank you We've got lots of people here saying they're really Looking forward to tonight Wow Gordon will drop back and forward in and out of the, yeah. the there's a big load of people that we need to say there's a lot of people have bought tasting packs for tonight and the three whiskies that we've got tonight just to tell everybody we're going to try the legacy chapter two the legacy series chapter two first up 
We're then going to move on to the 18-year-old, and then we will finish on the cask strength. So lots of people have bought tasting packs from us. I also just want to say thank you to our retail partners who have worked with us for this tasting as well. Uh, to the Inverurie Whiskey Shop, thank you. To selling the packs to some of their uh, customers. Mm -hmm. To Abbey Whiskey, thank you very much as well. Nickel and Parks in Sturbridge and the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop. They have been uh, selling tasting packs to their um Customers, these are great supporters of our brand, and they will be able to furnish you with all Glengoins, of course. So thank you to them. Um, so just before we get going on the first whiskey, and I'm, I, I'm like all people, I fully believe in drinking whiskey on one of these things. Um, but I just, we've got John here tonight, who is our malt master. And John, for a lot of people um, who, who love Glengoin, in, in sort of layman's terms, can you explain what you do from day to day for, <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for Glen Goyne, please? Well, you, you've been very kind in your introduction, um, but um, I'm going to take no credit for the whiskey. <laughs> I've, 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 I've got the easiest job. I've got probably the easiest job in the company because I don't make the whiskey. Um, we've got Robbie and the team through there who are making fantastic whiskey. We choose the best casks. I'm just looking at it after a few years. So if you've got great whiskey, great casks, most of the stuff we're dealing with is pretty blooming good. So yeah, yeah my job's pretty easy in that respect. And it's, it's a great, a great uh, whiskey to work with. I love working with Glen Goyne. Mm -hmm. But what I do in terms of the day to day is, oh, everything under the sun in, in some respects um, in terms of the stock side of things. But the most fun elements are looking at whiskies, um, QC, quality control, um, looking at every bottling that's going down the line um, to make sure that the bottlings are the right characteristics that we're looking at. That's that's what's happening on the day to day. But um, before that, we're forecasting. We're looking at our stocks. We're seeing what we need to fill into what sort of wood. We're looking at how our stocks match throughout the years and seeing how we can best balance that, not just this year, but for 20 years, 25 years, 50 years down the line. So yeah. there's elements of that. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think just the one thing that you forget, of course, is wow. everything that you do now, the spirit you make now is 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 for consumption. And, you know, after 10, 12, 15 years in cask, everybody almost forgets that whiskey doesn't come out of a tap sometimes. Aye, aye. And um, yeah, there, you, you're always dealing with, uh, dealing with forecasting and dealing with the, the variabilities and, and how much you're going to need in 50 mm. years time. You just don't know. Um, so, so it's a great part of the challenge, but probably the most fun part is the, the, the doing the vattings, the, the, the analyzing the stock, seeing how it's maturing. So we'll, we'll take samples out of indicative parcels, indicative casks out of every single parcel that we've got as it's maturing in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at it. We, we don't intend to use these casks at this stage, but we're just checking how they're progressing, how they're maturing. Um, so we've got big catalogs of, of that sort of information. And then when it comes to time to make a vatting, to make a Glengoyne 10 year old, I love the fact the Glengoyne 10 year old getting so much love because personally, I, I love the, I love the 10 year old as well. Um, it, yeah. it was probably be, push came to shove it would be up there with my favorite Glen Goins even though we work with fantastically old ones I just love the spirit that we work with and uh, bottling it at the 10 years is you know keeping that spirit quite alive and it's still quite vibrant uh, so so I love the 10 so um so yeah we'll look at every single cask that we will put into any vatting no cask ever gets unnosed unlooked at uh, we don't we make notes against every cask we do colors against every cask yeah, yeah, cask, yeah. we do strengths so that's that's just so much fun and and uh, you don't i mean you don't you don't go to and come from work in a taxi do you <laughs> no no um I, i'm not much of a drinker i'm glad to say so um yeah. it, it, it would be challenging otherwise but no we yeah. we know it's most of what we do I'll, yeah. I'll 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 be honest i probably am a little different from some of my my colleagues and other companies and that I, I do do quite a lot of tasting but always spittoon well yeah almost always taste at 20 percent and we'll always yeah. spit in but I, I do think tasting selectively is a very important part of, of of what we do for a product like this yeah so just before we start our first whiskey which we'll get, move on to in the next couple of minutes everybody Callum I know and I know it's been a big week for or the last couple of weeks for Glen Goyne because we released a very super special whiskey we released it and you've got a you just wanted to touch just ask John a specific question obviously in the week that we launched our or last couple of weeks, where we launched our Glengoyne 50-year-old. Yeah. 
I'm sure you'll take it as a compliment, John, when I said you don't look 50. Um, so, <laughs> you know, how does one, you know, one team keep the kind of consistencies of, of what they're looking for in a 50-year-old? Because it's a, obviously it's a long time to be aiming in the future for a whiskey. You know, how does whoever was first nosing these casks 50 years ago think this is what we want and this is how we're going to maintain that end goal for when you, you know, yourselves and your team sourced it out for the bottling this year? Sure, sure. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, the reality is this whiskey probably wasn't picked out 50 years ago to be specifically for a 50-year-old. Um, we, we at Ian McLeod, who are the owners of Glen Goyne, um, we've only owned them since around 2003. So this whiskey was distilled before our time. Um, and um, it, we, we purchased a lot of stock when we bought the distillery. And we had to look at all the different stock and see, right, what do we think we're going to do here? What we're, what we're going to use here? Is this going to be worth keeping? Is this not worth keeping? So we only came to the whiskey when it was already fairly well along the line. It was already over 30 by the time that we were looking at it. I think it was 37, actually, by the time we acquired it. Um, and this whiskey, where we had, oh, I'm not going to say the number of casks, but we had a few casks. We had, we had a handful of casks. And um, it was vatted at that stage so um, we're talking about edmonton had already done a nice selection of some 68 67 casks that they put together into some sherry casks to mature and um we've been keeping an eye on it um now we this is our oldest parcel of stock that we've got in the warehouse and um from this we drew the 40 year old we just used one or two casks and the, we chose the 40 year old ones at their peak and um, we got rid of some that we didn't think were totally up to scratch and the ones that we thought could last longer we left in the warehouses um and so we left those and then we planned to come back to it in 10 years we kept keeping an eye on it and um yeah sure enough we came and said which still had the vibrancy which still had the freshness which weren't over old which weren't over spiced which were too dry and then got yeah. that sort of balance and we're planning to look a bit older as well so we've actually done a few a few wee experiments um Ooh. to see what's going to happen nothing nothing love no, a wee no, experiment don't you gordon dallas <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, nothing extreme. There's no, no really active casks, but we've we've done one or two um, things with some different sort of reused casks just to see um, if we can add a few different elements. One of these will work, some of them won't. Um, yeah, that's, that's the beauty, yeah. 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 Well, fantastic. So a little bit of an insight into 50. Gordon Dallas, we'll go to you very quickly. Then we're going to go to yeah. this. Just a couple of comments very quickly, by the way. Um, we have just had a, co a comment there from the current Stillman, Ewan. He's on his break at the moment. Um, <laughs> Ewan is from Glen Goyne, from the actual stills, says, hello, how, how are you, Ewan? And he heard, he heard me mention about Jordan Hill and Drumchapel. He says, for a little link up, here's a wee tie-in for your viewers. The current Stillman, as in Ewan, went to school in Jordan Hill and was induced into the whiskey industry in Drumchapel. So there's a lovely combination. <laughs> hello. Keep it, keep, keep working. And can I just say, uh, Christopher Dumoulin, I think that's his name, Christophe Dumoulin is 35 years old today. Um, also, Robert Meikle, his brother's 65 today as well. He's watching as well. David Meikle, happy birthday to you. Muir McLaren is watching Harrogate. It's a present from his sister. So he's got the tasting kit as a present. And oh. finally, John Allison says, can we hurry up because my haggis is getting cold. Okay, we have our first whiskey. So everybody get their samples out. This is the new uh, Legacy Series Chapter 2. It's also, as you may notice, for those who maybe haven't noticed, Glen Goyne has had a little bit of a, a refresh, a little bit of a, a beautiful pack refresh. Um, we can see the new, obviously, Glen Goyne Valley of the Wild Geese here. So uh, we can see the goose absolutely flying straight. Um and uh, I really like the new pack. And, and what I also really like about the new pack is that every single beautiful box is 100% recyclable, uh, made from local materials in Scotland, uh, no plastics, no nothing, 100% recyclable from the 10 all the way through to the 21. So the three whiskies that we will be tasting tonight, the box that you will get it in is 100% recyclable. That is fantastic for Glen Goyne and its sustainability credentials. Let's get on to this whiskey. John, John, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story. Um, but just but just while people are listening to me, can you 
just talk us through a little bit about this whiskey in terms of its casks, its differences maybe to some of the core range? Uh, this... Uh... I love this one as a project. Um, when, it, when we come to look at new projects and look at the development of different things, we always want to, to see what different spin we can give. And um, what we decided for, for the inception of this one was to do a much higher bourbon percentage than we normally do, but also balance that out with select refill casks of sherry. Um, so we weren't, although we were going to use first fill sherry casks, we wanted to use, really showcase our, our refill sherry casks and our first fill bourbons. Now we came up with the concept of this quite a, quite a while ago, quite a, a long time before we actually did it. So it gave us a long time to every vatting we did. Oh, I like this cask. Let's leave that one out for legacy. Oh, this is a really nice one. Let's leave that one out for legacy. So we got ourselves quite a nice uh, collection of really quite stunning, quite dark, quite rich. Not as intense as the first fill, but mm. just that real balance. I love a, 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 a select refill sherry cask. So a, a sherry oh, cask yeah. being used for the second time. So you're yeah. not getting quite the same level of tannins, not quite the same level of spice. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's giving a very different oomph but it really allows a, a better balance between the, the spirit and the wood. Um, so that, along with a, a high presence of bourbon casks and a variety yeah. of ages of bourbon casks, really give us a very different product. Yeah, very different. And I think that's, you know, for you to use as much first fill bourbon as we have done in this whiskey is pretty unheard of for Glen Goyne. So I'm going to come around everybody to get their nosing thoughts in a minute. I just want to tell everybody quickly about the story. The Legacy Series was, 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 a, was a concept that we came up with to celebrate some serious sort of contributors to the history of Glen Goyne. Our first legacy series is all about a gentleman called Cochran Cartwright back in the late 1800s. This particular, this is, and that was a much more sherry orientated whiskey. This particular whiskey is to celebrate really the Russell family, to celebrate uh, Peter Russell and, and uh, to celebrate his purchase of the distillery as part of Ian McLeod Distillers in 2003, but more so to ensure that they have allowed us to continue on producing Glen Goyne the way we want to produce it. Time honored and uh, really slow distillation is the key to that in terms of giving John a great spirit to then, uh, well, then gets matured and John can work with. So, so that's the story very briefly about this chapter celebrating Peter Russell uh, and his purchase of the distillery for Ian McLeod, which obviously is who we all work for, except Callum and Philip, obviously, because they <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, I've not had a chance to nose it, but you guys have. So I'm going to go to Philip first. Philip, what are you picking up on the nose of this beautiful uh, Glen Goyne legacy? Straight Chapter away, two. straight away, uh, quite a lot of vanilla on there, and um, a little bit of coconut as well, which is where I find it um, mm -hmm. on here. Really find it, and a lot of dried fruit going on in there. Um, really, mm. really well balanced as well. Um, it's something that I've. Um, it's really interesting to try next to the uh, before the, uh, just before we came on. I was on the I tried the Legacy Number One, which mm. of course was really heavily sherried, uh, and then coming into the Number Two was um, is just excellent. Very, very different style, massive, yeah. Very very yeah. different style, very different whiskey. Callum, on the nose, what are you picking up on this one? Similar? Yeah, I would agree with Philip. The vanilla, um, it's a little bit of coconut as well. There was some sort of like, kind of maybe like lemon drizzle. Cake, maybe mm -hmm. the background as well. Yeah, um, tasting some bananas going on as well. Really the nice. one thing, the one, the one thing that strikes me about this, and I'll come to John as well. And John, it seems to be something in Glen Goyne, and we might see it also in the cast strength for me. Glen Goyne never seems to knows of the alcohol strength that it says on the bottle. Are you sure you're putting the right alcohol strength in the bottle? <laughs> Don't talk. It up never me. ever seems to knows of. It always seems less. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you on this one. I mean, this one it, it really is very, very balanced. Um, it's not a nose burner at all. It's it's yeah. elegant. It's, it's it's it has a, a pleasant, quite soft journey on the nose. And I'm not one to often drink my whiskey at strength, but de this one I definitely will do. The nose is just. I mean, it noses of a 43 to me. It doesn't nose of a 48. You know, there's not even no. that. You know, and and when we come on to the cast strength, I think we'll see that again. But uh, what, so what obviously. Is Sorry, one of the interesting ones about this, which will help the integration of this sort of strength as well, is COVID. Um, we've not mentioned it yet, but um, no, not this, mention we, it. Actually, we actually expected to launch this a wee bit earlier than we did. Um, we were planned to launch this around about February, March, um, but we didn't um, because of various things. But it was marrying an oak. Um, so we 
already had it marrying for we were due to marry it for about four months or so in oak but actually it's been well over about 10 months or so and that that sort of marrying process which we do for all of our glen goins well with the exception of the catch which we can talk about has helped with that integration there as well and 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 so you will matt you 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 basically bring the cast together you reduce it to strength will you or you you do that after the marrying process we do that after the marrying process right, okay. adjusting it to strength can give you a wee bit of difficulty for some of them we might would part reduce them right and then let them uh, settle down and then reduce it further down uh, but and, and, the one we left it and so. you'll use a very inactive cask just a basically like the third fill or something like that that won't won't add anything it's just marrying Honestly, we generally use the casks that we're emptying. So we try okay. to avoid using the sherry casks because we want to get, well, we'll, yeah. we'll use all the casks again anyway, but we don't want to give any casks too instant a hit. But every time you fill a cask into something, a whiskey into something different, there's mm -hmm. a chance it could get contaminated. Yeah. I mean, your yeah. biggest example is peat. So you put a lot of effort to, to avoid peat. Um, but our safest way is to put it back into the wood it's come from. And you know it's good wood it's going yeah. into, yeah. fresh wood. Um, so yeah, that's the way we. And peat do. is something we never play with at Glengoyne. I'm not great. I love peated whiskies, but not not from a Glengoyne perspective. It, it, it never it, will be. No, it's a, it's a big part of my job is actually picking up in peaty casks because yeah. um, as best as our and our predecessors' methods were, peaty casks will get through the mix and will get filled with Glengoyne, and mm -hmm. it's amazing the impact that a, a peaty cask can have on the spirit oh, of Glengoyne. I bet, I it jumps bet, out, yeah. yeah totally dominates it, totally destroys it. So I a bet. big part of our job is going PT out, PT out, uh, or else we lose the balance and the, the essence of what is going on. Mr. Dallas, are you enjoying that? I'm thoroughly and enjoying it. And I'm happy the audience to... thing? What are the audience saying? I'm thoroughly enjoying the comments. And if you see me giggling, it's not only I'm, I'm losing my mind and I'm, I'm a, bit, a bit mad, but I'm just giggling at some of the comments. Um, can, can we, John, just in the back of your mind, as well as you guys, we're getting quite a lot of questions about food pairing. We're coming up to Christmas, so just have that in the back of the mind. We're asking what's the best dram for after dinner from Katie, and also what's best to have with turkey. So maybe towards the end of the tasting, have a wee thought, because people do want to think about whiskey and Christmas and food pairing. Um, Steve Sorrell, or Sorrell says vanilla peaches. Uh, Steve Marshall, lemon drizzle cake. And Jennifer there says um, a bit of vanilla, lemon, and uh, Snoop's Snoop's Taylor, vanilla and lemon as well. I think uh, Jennifer was a bit of cinnamon. So we've got lots of lovely comments on the um, legacy too. I, I I think it's beautiful. I, I love the fact that I think there's more of that Glengoyne spirit in this whiskey. That that sort of bourbon maturation, I think, allows it to shine through. It's a slightly thinner maturation in my view, but I get a bit of grape on the taste of almost grape skin coming through. Um, and then there's just, just this lovely sort of slightly warming gentle oakiness coming through in the end um beautiful absolutely beautiful whiskey um i'm gonna add a bit of water to it though just to see how it changes i noticed philip you added some water yeah i did just before um really enjoyed it um as you said just before gordon you can't believe it's 48 percent uh it's 48 percent isn't it yep yeah. it is yeah yeah, -chill yeah. Filter. yeah. it just doesn't feel like it it feels like a really easy drinking 40 percent whiskey this one um i thought it brought out a little bit more of the spice and a little bit more of the sweetness uh by adding a little bit more water so that um it brought out and came into a bit more honey again and a bit lighter um uh, and that's gentle yeah. spice just lingering but the creaminess on it is just fantastic yeah it's quite it a lot really sweeter as well just leaves it there and i just really like that that like um you've just had a um like you've had a scone, that kind of um, cream, yeah. a scone kind of flavour on your tongue. Yeah. yeah, no, it's beautiful. Callum, what's your sort of overall reaction to it? You liking that? Yeah, really nice. I think it's a great whiskey. Really, really nice whiskey. Yeah, so so I mean, it certainly will be uh, in your market. So our global audience, it will be in, in a lot of markets if it's not there already. So, um, And it's also obviously available from our retailers and from us here at Glengoyne. John, um, when... When we put this together, and obviously with that amount of first fill bourbon coming through, and those those flavours that you would expect, vanillas and 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 um, the sort of coconut element and the gentle spiciness of that from the sort of toasted oak, I'm I'm just amazed that there's so much other action going on here. There's so many other flavours. There's a bit of richness from those sort of refill sherry. There's a vibrancy. There's a greenness as well. There's 
there's lots of different sort of touch points on this whiskey. I, I think you raise a good point. Um, the we're all seeing a lot of key bourbon keywords, um, like yeah. your coconuts, your vanillas, your citruses. Um, but it's not a bourbon whiskey. I mean, although I agree, totally agree with all these points, it's just a very different animal. It's just got that slightly different dimension. The sherry just gives you that nice underlying hug almost. It doesn't dominate. It just gives that extra layer of depth. It changes the, the character and the spirit of this whiskey. Um, just giving it that Glen Goyne element while retaining all the positives of the of the bourbon maturation that we're using here. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's, it's great. The, the bourbon casks are fantastic because bourbon casks can be variable in the level of extractive. Sometimes they can be very young and really active, really spicy. Sometimes they take quite a bit of time to get some of the elements yeah. through. I mean, the, we used a range of ages of bourbons. I mean, the, the, you get some of that spiciness and that will be coming from, I think it was 1996 parcel of casks that we used of bourbon um, to, to do some top notes to that, which are kind of getting th coming through as well. But it's just that range of character. We used some just less than 10 just to give us some more intensity, a bit more vibrancy, and then balance that with some of these really, really old casks as well. And I, and I guess that's what's exciting about If you look at our range, we use a lot of ages and 10 and 12s and 18s and 21s and things like that. When you get the opportunity to use those sort of older casks and vibrant younger casks and, and marry them together and use use a, a create a whiskey like this which of course we all know that all Glen Goyne is naturally colored of course so we can tell this is a well-aged whiskey um that must be it must be a different process for you than when you do when you're when you're trying for the consistency of the core rates the 10 the 12 the 18 21 in some respects it's kind of mind-blowing um to be honest because what well, you're being told here you go here's the entire rate here's everything that you've got Choose the yeah stuff yeah you you know, at least with your age statements, you're like, okay, I can, I'm, I'm clearly kind of, you know, I've got a wee box that I can work within. So I've, there's a yeah. little bit of tasks, but here it's find something nice and bottle it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what, what that's a great job. What a great job. It is. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, in terms of Ian McLeod, you pointed on uh, Leonard and P uh, Mr. Peter, who who are the owners of the company. They have such a great attitude in terms of the way that they work with the, the distillery. They're happy to give out any money that it's needed because for them, it's a long-term investment. They've got family who they want to be looking after this after generation. generation. Yeah, that's, that so, that's doesn't happen very often these days, no, which is great. And if it does happen in any industry, it is the whiskey industry. Yeah, um, and, so, and yeah. in terms of a product like this, they don't look at the they don't look at the my spreadsheets and say that's too old take that out that's too old no no they don't care is the product no. good great go with on, it on, <laughs> so, so before we move on on to mr dallas gregor McWee asks a question just exactly what you're talking about there john um when you're inspecting the casks how long do you leave them um is it by trying them or he says do you have enough experience to work out when you pull a cask out of a warehouse that's from Gregor McWee. So what, could you just explain very quickly about Yeah, that? sure. We've got a big database. Um, so we'll look at casks usually around about eight and we'll give a few marks on it, on how it's maturing, what sort of style it is, what sort of colour it is. So with that sort of time, we can earmark, right, this parcel should be going here, this parcel should be going here. So that gives us an idea. We don't know what every cask's like until we move it into our into our blending facility. Um, so we have rough ideas. We bring it in, then we do the hard work, and we say, right, we thought these casks would be ready. Are these ready? Are all of them ready? Are all of them the same? Are all of them different? Sherry casks are notoriously um, variable in styles, so you've got to take each cask on, on its own essence. Really, you're looking at a balance between <coughs> immaturity. Is it mature enough to bottle? Is there any faults, any taints, anything like that? And is it too old? Is it going to be too old? Is there too much extractive? Is the distillery character faded too too much? So it's 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 a lot of experience and then just deciding right, okay, where on this line are these casks? Wow, absolutely. Now there we go. There's a good great insight to and uh, you know having something like this project where we can just decide, look, what do we want to make that's great? Almost is the attitude, isn't it? What can we do that's a bit different? And that I think for a whiskey of this quality at forty eight percent. I'm, I absolutely love this, and I love the diff I love both legacies, but I love the difference between them. I love them both, chapter one and chapter two. Any final comments, gentlemen, Callum and Philip, on this one before we move on to the next whiskey? No. All happy, Mr. Dallas. You enjoying that in the sauna? It's just lovely. It's just it's that you know fruitiness. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's a, so flavoursome. 
Yeah. That, but sometimes with the Glen going, we talk about the sherry, but the, the, the bourbon barrels just give such, just so flavoursome. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Absolutely great. So so that is the that, that was released, um, as John said, quite a lot uh, later than it was meant to be, but it is now available. And uh, it's a limited release. When it's gone, it's gone. Um, and going to be... Home. Um, and obviously our retail partners who've been there tonight so thank you for them um but yeah it's a great whiskey limited release so get there while you can um now obviously john what we, we spoke about I, I, it might just make sense to do it a little bit more if you were going to pair that with something in terms in the food world yeah would anybody have a view on what that might be um bearing in mind we're in the run-up to christmas anybody got a, a sort of thought on that for me it's that sort of you know that sort of lemon sort of cake at the end of a you know if you if you know you sometimes you have a few puddings at christmas or whatever and i would go for the sort of lemony one rather than anything it's chocolatey i think the next whiskey is more chocolatey but um, I'm, I'm afraid i'm a vegetarian so i can't really give you much proper mm. uh, information mushroom stroganoff mushroom <laughs> stroganoff there we go <laughs> Callum, anything you think that might go well with i think a pre-pudding would be quite nice yeah i'll agree yeah yeah Sort of citrus, creamy, cheesecakey sort of type dessert. Philip, something similar, something a bit citrusy, nice cheesecake, um, a lemon tart maybe, or something along them lines. Um, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's also if you went slightly the other way, you could look at doing something in the sort of potentially, potentially, in a seafood area, but not so sure. We'll see how that would go. I need to need to spend a whole day doing seafood and whiskey and see if it worked. But that would be a tough day at the office. Um, okay, so that is the Legacy Series Chapter 1. Any comments on the internet about that one, Gordon? Are we ready for the 18? Yeah, well, people, Linda, for example. Linda, right? Hello, Linda. And there's so many people. I can't get around everyone. She just says, adding water makes Legacy 2 a little sharper. The emphasis, uh, this emphasizes the dry oak on the finish. So, yeah, people can add a little bit of water and see how you get on with that. It's a great uh, thing to do, and um, that can bring out some more of the flavour, and she thinks it's a little bit more of the dry oak. So, yeah, lots of comments. I'll, I'll keep an eye on them, Gordon, but let's... Okay, we'll move on. We'll move on to... Uh, this is an old bottle that I have, but there is a new pack, obviously, for the 18. Oh. Um, this is the wonderful 18-year-old, and I have said consistently, ah, Gordon has the new pack. Here we go. I seem to know one with a new packaging. I don't have it either. No, I don't have to go. Gordon, I think, has just raided the shop. Uh, and uh, has, by the way, everybody, the <laughs> distillery is unfortunately not open for tours at the moment. We are doing virtual tours. And, but the shop is open. You can go to the shop, I think, at the distillery uh, and purchase yes. not just Glengoyne, but other Ian McLeod products between now and Christmas. Can I just say, Gordon, even just in the packaging, I mean, the 18 is just classic. Well, I'm sure you'll talk about that, but I just think the new packaging is wonderful because if you've got somebody else in the family that likes whiskey, you can have it like this and you can monitor the level of your bottle. Mm -hmm. by None of this, you know, what goes on in the can, people have a wee sniffer, but now you can keep it open, display it, and see Very good. what the level and is. 100% recyclable. Fantastic. You can put it in the bin with confidence and it will be recycled, which is great for whiskey packaging. So um, the 18-year-old, I've consistently said for the last year or so, this is my favorite Glengoyne. I think this has got almost a bit of everything in here, and but slightly, quite a bit darker profile, John. Um, and that obviously comes because our first fill element of this whiskey is our sherry cast from Spain. Yeah, yeah. Yep, no, this is very much a sherry led whiskey. It's always been designed to be so. Um, we're we're approaching fifty percent first fill sherry in terms of its makeup. Um, so we really want it to be a nice step up towards the twenty one in that sort of style, but be very much unique in itself. Mm -hmm. um, the the balance that I've got with the with the eighteen year old is, I tend to quite like using um, refill hogshead um, from bourbon, not first fill bourbon, but just some refill bourbon styles. That tends to be the the, the predominant uh, refill element, and then balance that with a, a nice element of American oak sherry and uh, European mm -hmm. oak sherry. And I think that really gives a nice a nice cleanness um, from the the, the refill uh, hogsheads. And then that weight from the sherry, it gives a nice balance between the two different styles. Yes, you've got the sherry coming through loudly, but it's still crisp. It's still clean. And, and Glen Goyne matured 
in its mid-teens is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm a huge fan of this because I just feel it's got many different touch points. I was once uh, uh, in Austria and a gentleman came up to me after after a long day of whiskey drinking, I have to say, and he said to me, uh, Gordon, he says, you're, he says, you're, uh, you're 18 year old. It's like an apple strudel, he says, and I absolutely sort of know what he means. Those red fruits, a bit of that spiciness. Absolutely wonderful. Um, let's have a, let's see what people think. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the difference between American and European oak sherry casks, which are really, really big. And people need to, there's quite a lot of difference between the two of them. So, Philip, how are you getting on with that one? Really love it. Um, Gordon um, and John and Gordon and Callum, um, it's just absolutely brilliant. Uh, to me, this is my, as I said before, the 18 and the 21 are my uh, favourite. Uh, yeah. The 18, um, it's just the brown sugarness that goes on in mm. there. And... Uh, the sweetness and the apples that go on in there. I yeah. just find this a really well balanced whiskey. Um, really easy to drink, really nice to sit, um, nice to go to. Um, and it is one of my favourite whiskies. Um, but yeah, it's just oh yeah, stunning That's whiskey. Sensational, isn't it? Yeah. Callum? Yeah, no, I would agree. It's that kind of eighteen, you know, to the twenty one being the more, you know, that kind of Christmas cake mm. and starting to get some of that in it and the raisins, you know, red apples. It's just such a pleasant and easy drinking whiskey as well. Yep, yeah. Um, so. hmm. Yeah. Mr. Dallas, what are you picking? Are you enjoying that? Well, Gordon, the 18 is the eternal classic. It really is one of the, you know, as a, as a tour guide. A bit like a you. A bit like you, an eternal classic. A bit like you. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's like the Bangles. I, I just, you know, a Pernal, uh, classic. I just, I just love it. And, and as, as I said, as a tour guide, you would do the 18 would be just wonderful for what I think, Callum, you mentioned about the gold medal parade when you came, the 18 and the 21, you would take people into the manager's house. Yeah. Robbie was working above us there, the distillery manager, and you would discuss and take people through the, the 18 and the 21. And it really is one of the I think great whiskies of the world, the Glengoyne 18. It really mm. is. If you look up Glengoyne, the 18 is right there. It's just, I'm so glad we're tasting it tonight because you do all the new ones and all that, but just, it just works. It just, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll get a bit of reaction from the from the social world in a minute. John, yes. what I love about this whiskey is I, I pick up both those types of sherry casks in this. So you know that European oak is generally delivers a darker color to whiskey. Bit more of that sort of tannic dryness and a bit of those darker fruits. And then you get the almost vanillas and stewed fruits of American oak and the lighter colours. It's almost like the American oak fills in the gaps of the European oak, if you know what I mean. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I mean they're they're really quite different sherry casts, aren't they? Totally are, totally are. Uh, traditionally, the European oak being used for transport of sherry, the American oak being used in the bodega system. Uh, the, the American, as you say, a lot lighter in uh, colour generally, um, lighter in extractives. Sometimes take a wee bit more uh, time to mature. That's why they work quite nicely here. Um, but always keep a, a, a vibrantly fresh vanilla. I always get them slightly more sticky, get more of the apples coming through in the American oak. Um, they're always that wee bit sharper, I think, for me. But balance that with the, the heavy tannic, more dried fruits. But go too old might get a wee bit dry european oak so balancing those two styles the drier and the lighter and the sharp and the vibrant styles and then of course you throw in these lovely old um hogsheads in there in the mix as well mm. you just for for me your 18 has got this lovely fruity old i mean this feels an old whiskey this mm. old soul with all the sherry elements almost at the periphery yeah. it doesn't have the full weight of a big sherry whiskey but for me it's the it benefits from that because oh, it's, yeah, you can really delve into the different elements of the flavors while enjoying the soft heart yeah. i would absolutely agree i think this has got an absolute there's a delicacy to it there's a richness to it it's yeah. you know it's got this sort of maltiness as well but it, it you know going back to how you would drink this this is a, of the evening this is our after dinner whiskey this is the one you would pull out after dinner on christmas day and Absolutely. share and enjoy and and for me it, it would be a brilliant whiskey to have with cheese etc cetera, etc cetera. and and just in that after dinner environment there's chocolate or cake a, still about or a nut loaf a, vegetarian or a nut loaf <laughs> should you be vegetarian <laughs> Katie was asking about the best dram christmas night after dinner <laughs> sitting like uh, what would that <laughs> great dram so i think Gordon the 18. Oh, maybe 
Oh no, um, definitely, definitely. I think the eighteen is is a is 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 of the of the the, the three the one that you would select for that. Um, but then you know everybody's different, and there's other options, of course. But uh, I think the eighteen would be the one that you'd want to do. So so we're looking at fifty percent, roughly fifty percent first fill, um, and then those as as John's described those sort of those hogsheads coming in. They they they'll be a little bit more prevalent in the Glengoyne spirit that's changed over 18 years. Would that be right as well, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, we, we, we certainly... Um, we, we've used more bourbon and more hogsheads going forward, but um, I, again, the right balance, the right activity of wood at this age, you've just got the spirit just reaching its peak without being dominated by too much active wood. I, I, yeah. I love... Although we, we, we use a lot of sherry styles, and I love sherry styles, a good refill cask, Great spirit makes a great whiskey. Yeah, no, I'd absolutely would agree. Absolutely would agree. Now, Gordon. yes, yes, Just Gordon, what's happening in the world yeah. of social? Social, uh, yeah. But Jennifer, it's totally delectable. I love that expression. Mike Grant, favourite. It really is some people's huge favourite 18. They've, they've, you know, loved it. So Tony Tescuba. I hope that's your... He said, just a stronger nose than the Legacy 2 there. If it gets a wee bit more on the nose. Uh, Stephen Brown, brown sugar, apple scent of spice, sherry sweetness. Vivian, hello, Vivian. She was saying that's her least uh, amount of whiskey in the cabinet because she keeps on drinking the 18. We cannot keep it in the house. So drinkable. Helen, uh, Helen, hello, almonds. She gets a lovely nuttiness. A wee bit of almonds uh, there as well. And a few other comments, but let's leave it there just now. Um, but yeah, lots of love coming in for the 18, and I'm not surprised. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I just wanted to get John's view and everybody else's view on it is, you know, a lot of people say to me that I, you know, that say when I'm out and about, which I haven't been about out and about obviously so much this year, well, not at all, funnily enough, but uh, a lot of people say to me, oh, Gordon, I'm, I only, you know, I'm, I believe that whiskey has a sweet spot of 15 to 18. That's where the best whiskeys are. And, I've heard that quite a few times, and and um, I don't know if I don't know if that's the case. The eighteen just happens to be happens to be my favourite. But John, I don't I I don't particularly buy into that sort of. But a lot of people think that or or feel that that is in in most Scotch whiskies that's the sweet spot of 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 of. So, but it depends on casts. It depends on so many variables, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it depends on the spirit you're dealing with as well. Some yeah. peak fairly early, some peak later. If you're a bigger, heavier spirit, you might need more time to to, to get some of your heavier elements out. Glengoyne, at the very young ages, is still quite young. I mean, it's got quite a lot of intensity, quite a lot of oomph to it. Um, and that's why you know, we don't bottle anything really young of Glengoyne. Um, and that's why we leave it that wee bit longer. In blending terms, because we will use a wee bit of Glengoyne in some of our blends, Lang's probably most famously. Um, mm. We'll always leave it till a bit longer just to get that level of maturity. But that's a good thing. That's because you've got a lot of building blocks in there that are taking a wee bit of time to all come together. Um, so for the likes of a Glen Goyne, I think it's great at 10. You've still got elements of the youth el coming through. I like that. I, I think that's quite attractive. But by 18, it's all coming together. It's all just coming mm. down a wee bit. It's all becoming more yeah. silky, more smooth. It's, it's, it's very, very balanced. But as you said, it's down to the casks. Well, I've, yeah. seen, I've, I've seen fantastic five-year-olds and I've seen terrible 25 year olds oh, totally, the, yeah. the, the wood that's used wow. um, even if totally. it's the same spirit so uh, yeah. no, the, the the variability of cast totally. is, cast, is, so, yeah. is fascinating it's a nightmare at times and you're but, not um, but and also in an 18 you're not just using 18 year old cast we will use slightly older because you, know, you sometimes have to do that how difficult is it to, to hit the the color the same color each time using natural color um, you know, <laughs> each batch that you make of the ten. Let's talk about the ten rather than the ten. Yeah, how yeah, yeah. how do you how do you manage that in terms of? You might have it's it's this percentage of this, this percentage of that, and you might sort of bring it together and the taste is right, the color isn't, or something. How do you manage that? Um, to to make it sound as sexy as possible, Excel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 all, it's all a balance. I mean, we're we're analysing every characteristic that we can. So notes on the nose, notes on the colour, and we build it all together. We say, mm. right, okay, let's do this vatting. How's that going to 
knows how's that going to taste so we think it'll taste fine let's make up the vatting let's add samples of all the different casts put together yeah. nose is fine how does the color look ah it looks all right oh this looks a bit a little bit light we're going to, need to add a wee bit more sherry so we talk about the percentages we add to each vatting that yeah. always varies because reality dictates of course, well, actually, yeah. These sherry casks have more oomph, will leave slightly less yeah. out, or these sherry yeah. casks don't have as much oomph. So there's a lot of balancing um, in and out just to find the right sort of sure. uh, characteristic that we're looking sure. for. Um, it's great fun. My life would be 10 times easier if Glen Goyne wasn't such a good brand and it said, let's just add caramel, because the fact that it's always been natural color means we have to put in a heck of a lot of work um, yeah. to make sure that we're getting uh, all the boxes ticked. But it, but it fits into the wonderful Glengoy narrative. Everything takes time across whatever we do at Glengoy, whether that is the distillation of the spirit, the great maturation, the, the production of those sherry casts that takes six years in Spain. Everything takes time, and that's all down to being, you know, uh, Ian McLeod and also just down to the philosophy of everybody who works on Glengoy. Um, Philip, do you have a question, any question you'd like to, to ask John, I, I guess? Yeah, uh, there is this question uh, for you, John. So sure. um, we keep on um, when we're doing uh, when we when we see you producing a whiskey, and we saw the legacy come out, and we've seen both um, at the legacy. We've seen various other bits come out recently. Um, do you get much control over that? Are you given um, an idea and then you go away with it, or do you get a bit of freedom yourself, or where where does it come from? Are you targeted on a cost price? Um, where do you stand? Um, it's, it's a bit of all things, um, to be honest. It can happen. We're, we're fairly flexible. So, um, yes, we get given briefs. Um, we've got a team at, at Glen Goyne who work on the marketing side who think, yeah, we want to do something. What can we do? Um, anyone who works with me will know I'm very good at the word no. So if there's something that's suggested that, um, <laughs> that I don't think is suitable, I will make my opinions clear on that one. Um, so we, if the stock's not there, if the stock's not of, of suitable quality, fine. There's been a few projects where in the ideal world, you know what, let's sell this. And um, no, 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 it's, we, we veto it. Enough, yeah. um, no, it's it's the the team at Glen Goyne. Um, you'll all know you'll all know Robbie, um, but he he's the distillery manager, and um, he's got a team around him as well. They're really vital for the development of all the products that we do as well. So anytime we've got a new product, the legacy, any batch strength, any cast strength, anything like that, we have to run by them. And if they say it's not good enough, then it's not good enough. Um, a recent story, we 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 had a cask which. Um, on paper, it was fantastic. It was a nice old cask. It could have could have yielded, um, you know, a really good reputation. It could have, you know, done something really tasty. We sent it through to Robbie. Uh, well, I say something tasty. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but someone else in the in the company said well, this would be good to release. Um, so I wasn't the biggest fan of it. We sent it through to Robbie. Robbie drew a big skull and crossbones and said, "No danger." <laughs> so, so even though all the boxes were ticked. Robbie said no, doesn't happen. Just doesn't and he's happen. from New he's from Newcastle. You don't want to mess with him. <laughs> I, I no 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 no. You did we 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 no no no. I am terrified, Robbie. Um, <laughs> you got, Ian says you are an artist. Lovely. He is an artist. Thank you very much. Doing a lot coming. of painting. I you know what, Gordon? I love when things are live because this is live. It's not like television. It's not been recorded. So I love when things are live. Ron Heslett in Texas has been online. He's just quickly i googled maybe he said i've just discovered a store in texas that sells the 18 he's going to run out and get it right now so don't get it man, it's happening man. right now across the other side <laughs> of the world love it uh richard barlow marzipan and almond uh, mike grant says whatever you're doing with the 18 john don't change a thing linda a huge lots of lovely descriptions rich mature a bit like yourself, Gordon. Fruitcake, a bit like myself. Uh, Debonara, apple and spice. She loves the 18. Robert Bradley's eating a mince pie right now. Oh, lovely. Now, I'm there's a it. good idea. That's <laughs> so, a great idea. Listen, you can have your television. It's all pre recorded This is happening live. So brilliant. <laughs> People, keep them coming in. Love your call. Gordon, do you enjoy doing whiskey unscripted that's not live? Do you enjoy that? Yeah, well, yes, yes. It just... <laughs> <laughs> we will we will be doing a live whiskey on script, but we'll move on, we're moving on from that. Yeah, no, I think I'm, and I've said I've said it along for the last last two years. Eighteen year old has been my Glen Goyne. I rattle yeah. through bottles here quite quickly, which is uh, 
you know, such is life. But I just think it's a fabulous whiskey, and uh, I'm glad it's hitting hitting the straps out there, and, and with Callum and Philip as well. So we'll keep moving on. Um, whew, beautiful. I'm just going to finish this. This is so good. <laughs> Oh. Yes, Slanjava. Thank you all for 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 joining us tonight, Slan. Absolutely, Slanjava. Everybody's beautiful Glen Cairn glasses. Fantastic. That's the eighteen. Job done. So let's move on to whiskey number three, which is Cask Strength Batch Number Eight. Now, now, well, all I can say is, John, when I look at the box, I'm thinking Cask Strength. This is going to be. 59.2, I think this is. Good guess. Um, and I'm like, 59.2. The only reason I know is, obviously, I actually did a tasting last night, and I tasted uh, tasted a bit of this afterwards, and uh, it was a great whiskey. Um, this is quite a... The, the cast strengths have all been... <laughs> I call them a variation on a theme. Um uh, and, the, and and really, really generally all 58, 59% bang on strong. How do you come with, how do you put together a whiskey that has all that strength in terms of the selection of casks? Well, with the cask strength, we love the sort of style that we're looking at. So we, we developed it, well, even from the, the uh, eight years or so, plus nine years that we've been doing it. And before that, we were doing the 12-year-old the cask strength. So we've been doing cask strength for a while. And we learned pretty quickly that a nice, healthy dose of sherry casks will always help balance out the strength. Um, so having a, a slightly higher than than some of the other which is around that age, um, sherry content did help weight it you know keep the the intensity keep the strength um the feeling of strength i should say the burn um down but we every vatting is different every time we do it it is slightly different and we're never trying to reinvent the wheel but we do modify it slightly each time yeah. um two reasons for that firstly it'll be um it's a reflection of the stock um we want to give a, an accurate um reflection of the stock, sort of stocks that we've got so if we've got some more bourbons coming through then let's use some more bourbons let's not stick rigidly to not using hey, bourbons. Let's yeah. a wee bit of bourbons and yeah. um, this time we touched on a wee bit of brioca they were different casks and um, so we used a wee bit of those we didn't use as much as we want because actually they need a wee bit more time to mature but we cherry picked the best ones that were in there we added them in because we had them as part of the stock as well so we make Gordon Dallas, cool sorry thing. Gordon Dallas rioca is a wine just so you know <laughs> <laughs> Not a show <shirt> bill. <laughs> and yeah. the other challenge with this one is that you've got to have a look at the strength of the casks themselves as well, because um some of our parcels are at slightly higher strengths than others. And we don't want to make this higher than 60. We don't want to be a 63, 64% whiskey. That's going to be too much. That's going to be too much for markets. It's going to be too expensive for people to buy. And it's not balanced really at that sort of strength. So you we're choosing the casks that are the, the yeah. right sort of strength and the right intensity at said strengths as and well. Also, up at 60% alcohol, sometimes you struggle to actually take that legally on planes. Exactly. Well, yeah, <laughs> but some markets is, uh, it's illegal to sell it as well. Correct. So. I think in Norway or something, it's pretty illegal yep. to sell whiskey. Yep. That's got a strength. John, John, Steve, Steve Critchlow is asking, what age is the cask strength? Well, it's another non-age statement whiskey. Um, I don't. It's not. It's not something that we really advertise. But the youngest is round about eight years old, and we go up to twelve-ish as well. So the average is probably round about ten, give or take. But again, it's a very cherry-picked project. So um, talking about some casks being um, eight and fantastic and twenty-five and not mature, we're choosing the best casks that we can round about these ages at the right sort of strengths to get the sort of product that we're looking for. And again, that natural colour just again shows you this is not a young whiskey. This is not a, uh, you know, it's it's an average of ten. It's got good strength. It's got good depth. And what I love about the first fill of this whiskey, you know, those are the casks that are bringing in most of that cask flavours. Is is almost split a third between bourbon, uh, European oak, and American oak in the first fill, which which amasses to about fifty percent of the whole whiskey, roughly. Um, and I love the fact that there's the three main. You know, the three main types of first fill casts that we use predominantly are, are prevalent in this whiskey. I think it's got a beautiful, uh, a be and I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going back to what I said earlier, by the way. This is not 59.2% alcohol. This really does not know a 592 Can I just say, well, for the, I love the comment, Marco Mayer, how you doing, Marco? 
Um, it just sounds so much like you, Gordon. He says, 59.2%. Really? <laughs> you love those kind of rhetorical questions, Gordon. Right, so absolutely. smooth, so balanced. But, but yeah, you, would sure, you would all agree, would you not? It does not nose, but nose of about 50. It's, Callum, it's a big part think? of what we're doing. Sorry, yeah. carry on. So, sorry, Callum, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think this is the cask strength always seems to be my sort of second favorite. The twenty one dollars the cask strength is a uh, always comes in there, just something different, um, something's always kind of changing with the different mm. the different additions that you do. And I think this one's is, is phenomenal. I was actually I drove to the distillery the day it was released, was phoning, you know, please can we come and get a bottle? <laughs> uh, I was so keen to get a bottle. I can see it in your cabinet behind. No, I know I'm not trying to play the twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I was honestly phoning them in the shop. Is it, kind of, is, it, is it coming out yet? Is it coming out yet? Well, we'll be tomorrow. Just to calm down. I don't know about it. <laughs> drove up to get it um, to my grana, which is fine as well. Um, so that was really nice. But no, I think the, the, the cast is, is phenomenal. I think the like the I think I saw one of the tasting notes somewhere that was a kind of coffee, coffee popcorn, and I think that's honestly epitomises exactly what. Yeah. Well, I've also been a wee bit addicted to the, the kind of Cadbury orange chocolate buttons recently. That um, oh. and there's kind of that's going to come through in the background like as well. That's sitting like a while and, and I'm kind of picking that up now. And it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal whiskey. It really is. Yeah, Philip. Yeah, exactly the same. You know, it's um, for fifty nine percent. This is amazing. Um, the flavours that come out of it. I'm a big fan of cast strength whiskey because I think it uh, really allows uh, somebody like John um, and, uh, and of course, Robbie to be able to um, show what the distiller is about. That's my third version of cast strength whiskey. I love trying a lot of cast strength whiskey from a few distilleries because I think you learn a lot about the distillery um, off it. Um, but yeah, it is, it's just so easy. The toffiness coming off that, as you mm. said, Callum, um and yeah it's the fruitiness coming off it i think it's a really really well known whiskey um and it sells well for myself in the pub um and online as well it's done me really well it's, it's, it, it's been a sort of cast strength year for me if i'm honest <laughs> <laughs> with what's been going on this year it's been a cast strength year and i think what i love about this personally is is when i drink this at home I don't, I don't drink it out of a glass like this because, I, you know, I, I, I sort of know the cast strength now. I've nosed it. I sort of know what I'm going to expect. So I actually I actually drink it in a rocks glass and I have an, an ice ball and I drop an ice ball in it. And I love the fact that when you drop an ice ball in a decent measure of cast strength, oh, yeah. the dilution takes a bit of time. It cools the alcohol down. The dilution takes a little bit of time. Now, this is not what you would do to to get in amongst the flavors, but to relax and enjoy a whiskey. And when you see it change with that little bit of water over time in the one big lump of ice rather than lots of small lumps of ice, it's a fabulous experience for me. Um, and that is how I drink the cast strength. It puts you totally in control of how you drink it, I think is, is my sort of, you know, my sort of view. And, and this particular whiskey with its juicy fruits really, really sums that up for me. I don't know what you guys think. Yep, Mr. Yep, Dallas, yep. do you still drink it straight out of the bottle, or are you... Uh... <laughs> Just with a... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, up one for you. Your um, friend, I believe, Paul, has been in touch. Uh, don't, you, you mentioned you live cast strength whiskey. He says that beard took two weeks to grow. Is that because you're drinking <laughs> cast strength whiskey? Yeah, Paul. Um, I felt Paul just before we uh, before we came on air. Paul was um, buying takeaway from the pub this evening, um, and uh, believe it or not, uh, John that you mentioned earlier, um, um, he was waiting for his haggis, snoops, and tatties. He was uh, he's one of my customers, and he had his fish and chips last night. So you know, oh. it, it's great to have them on um, and joining us. So it's been quite a laugh, but yeah, it does. It only takes me a couple of weeks to grow a beard, and it's going quite well, especially the little white tufts at the end here. That is not a couple of weeks, is it? Oh, well, we could do with something in my head. We could do some cast strength up there. would be great. Robert Meikle, he's trying to... I love this because it's live, as I said before. He's trying the cast strength batch eight with cheese and chocolate. Lovely. And he thinks chocolate is edging the cheese okay. for him. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite nice. Depends on the cheese and the chocolate, to be fair. If the cheese is a Dairy Lee dunker, then the chocolate's going to win. <laughs> I didn't know you'd do such things, Gordon. You know, I thought you were more rarefied than that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Can I just say, so, Gordon? Somebody, yeah. one of my one of my customers who's actually online with us, um, has just messaged me going, um, "Mince pie, very nice with the legacy one." 
Mince pie yes. with the legacy one. That and might that be well. That the only exactly. well that that's great. The only unfortunate thing is there's no legacy one left for people to try that with. So we would probably out of the selection tonight say maybe the 18 would be the one to have a mince pie with after you know a little sip and leave maybe leave a wee 18 year old in the mince pie out for Santa on uh, on uh, box on Boxing Day no on Christmas Eve. Um, John, this is an absolute triumph. This is beautiful. Absolutely love it. Do you have a, John, you've obviously put together all the cast strengths. I remember cast strength six was a favorite of mine. Lots of sherry casks in that one. Do you have one that stands out, one that you think, obviously apart from this one, but uh, is there one that you particularly liked of the cast strengths? I don't choose favorites. Don't do that to me. It's like choosing a favorite favorite child, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, no. (laughs) Everyone's a challenge. Everyone's you're building up. It's 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 to get to that point where you reach that sweet spot where we we do all of our nosing at twenty percent EBV, um, but with the cast strength we've got to build it up. We've got to we 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 don't nose everything at high strength because we'll knacker our noses, but we we selectively nose at the high strength. So every one of them finding that point where great the burn isn't there. The flavors are there. The richness of the sherry is there. We've just found that balance. Every one of them is, is, is I absolutely adore. But I must admit, I'm thoroughly enjoying this one. I have, I have added a, so I had a little bit in the glass. I've almost added about a third of, of water of what was left. It's now just tastes like we used to do. We used to have a fruit juice in in the UK called Umbungo. Drink <laughs> <laughs> the jungle. Yeah, it's a bit like the old Umbungo now. Um, Absolutely loving it. Go on, a whiskey. Just ask, John, John, you've got a question coming in, and it's just about uh, the Peter, our, our friend across in Minneapolis, is asking about the primary factors that you, you you maybe bring into your thinking when you're choosing casks for the cask strength. Are they different from the cask that will go on to become age statements? Is there a, is, there, is there a difference? What's the what's the rationale there? The a lot of whiskey does settle down, um, so it can be pretty monstrous uh, high strength. But when you dilute it down to about forty percent, it can find a better balance. So you don't have that level of forgiveness with a cask strength. Um, you've got to see what it's like at high strength. So it, really, the extra thing we're doing from our side is obviously if it's intense at twenty, it's going to be it, it, massive at sixty. So we've got a wee idea there, but um, we're we're taking the strengths and we're looking at a high strength to see what the intensity is. And really, it's the nose prickle. Really, it's the intensity. Really, it's seeing how expressive it is at the high strengths. Because some whiskies at high strengths are so closed, mm. and, and and it's a shame because you know how good they are with a wee bit of water. They really open out and bring their intensity. You need to find those that are giving you what you want at the high strength that you're not wasting them essentially by putting them into a high strength whiskey ones that are really re- really justifying and um, the strength that you're putting it out at because mo- the cast strengths are all great with water but you want people to be wowed you don't want to say here's a product but add water you'll like it no you want it to, to open it and love it straight out of the bottle yeah no i'm, I'm absolutely loving this it's so drinkable for uh, and uh, you know with water or not i i just love this whiskey it's absolutely fantastic <laughs> So, um, Gordon. Steve, oh, yeah. Gordon, Gordon didn't ask. Hold Steve on one second. Sorrow. Steve, Steve Sorrow just says, why the hell would you want a malt whiskey to taste like a bongo? We can park that one up. Just park it up. I just meant the fruitiness. I just meant that sort of fruitiness. It just hit me. Uh, I think it was the change from what it was with a bit of alcohol strength down with, by adding quite a lot of water. Philip. Can I just ask, we're, 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 sitting, we're here on the bat strength at the minute, uh, on, the, on the cast strength, sorry. Um, can I just ask, do we see us, uh, do you see Glen Goyne producing any further um, types of cast strength apart from the cast strength editions? Because we're seeing it, we're trying it now when you're seeing other distilleries bringing out a certain cask of cast strength. Yeah, uh, I mean, so like other, other cast strengths other than the cast strength. Yeah. Got yeah, well, we do, there's a teapot dram, teapot which we're obviously fab as it is. Yeah. fabulous European oak maturation. We also did in I think our last or second last, I've done so many of these I can't quite remember. Um, we we did the we did the cask of the moment where we had a Madeira cask, we had a port cask, we had a refill bourbon and a reef and a, and a sherry. Um, so um, we do use other casks. John, do we have? I mean, that port cask that won that was absolutely Excellent. incredible. One of the best port cask whiskies I've ever ever had. One of the best whiskies I've ever had. Is there any, yeah, I mean, beyond sort of sherry and bourbon and a few, any other cast types that you 
we do do use more or we won't use more or we've got a few experiments but uh, yeah. really i don't think i love glenn going uh, and and mm. we love the sort of style that we produce, so we're not looking to do something radically different in terms of the profile mm. that we've got. We've got some new oaks there in the mix, and um, we've got some port. We've got a wee bit of the Kai Madeiras. We've got a few different things that we're 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 uh, got doing experiments with, but never with the idea of of making this massive releases. Maybe never with the intention of releasing them in their 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 uh, by themselves. Perhaps uh, intending to use them for projects like Back Strength just. Uh, cast threads just to add a little different element in there yeah. giving us almost a different blending ingredient as yeah. opposed to being fully led by these True. different types because yeah, yeah, yeah. the glen going style is great we don't want it to, to rock it too far it is fabulous and i completely agree philip did you just go and put 50p in the meter there <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry um one of the problems we're living in the light district is uh every now and then we don't have that the best it's like you guys up in scotland the broadband just keeps disappearing so oh, yeah no, gordon dallas knows all about that <laughs> yes gordon what's happening on social as we draw to the close of this wonderful tasting well, Stone Croucher there, he says, it's phenomenal, the cast strength whiskey. He says he usually drinks it with water, but enjoys this one straight from the bottle. Uh, Peter again is asking which one would work best with a cocktail with iron brew. Peter, maybe it's the third whiskey in. We'll, we'll part that question up there. <laughs> um, we've had lots of love of the teapot dram, but we're not tasting tonight as well. Um, so the teapot jam's lovely. Mare Re, R-I-E, it's her husband's birthday. Happy birthday. Wherever your husband is, he's watching this now. And um, just lots of love uh, from the cast strength here. Craig Nickel. How are you ah, doing, Craig? Craig. Best of the three, he says, this would work with Christmas pudding. This would work with Christmas pudding. So um, that's a nice that's a nice comment there to finish with. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, look, I think there'll be three, three fabulous whiskeys. John, you've given us some fantastic insight into your... You're, I mean, you work in you work in the smallest blending lab in the world. Um, the best. It, 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I just saw. Uh, I've been in blending labs at ten times the size of your your blending lab, but it's uh, it's amazing how what you create and how you do such an amazing job of bringing these wonderful. Let's face it, you've got some great raw materials to bring together, but um, how you bring them together and create these whiskies. And we, we, we one more little question. All right, uh -huh. one um, any thoughts about Legacy 3? We've had a little question in. Have you got, the, is the grey matter ticking? It is ticking, actually. And it has been, we've got the ball rolling already on that. So there is a little few thoughts on it. So, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wee bit off. Uh, but uh, you, can't, you can't stand still. You've got to keep moving on and thinking of the next thing, for sure. So, yes, there is all... But we can't tell you anything at this stage, obviously. We'd have to. We'd have to uh... Callum, what would you like to add? Have you had a good evening? You enjoyed the drams? Yeah, very great evening. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed good, it. Callum. Thoroughly good. good. Enjoyed Cheers. Yeah, I'm going to another cast strength, actually, just because. Uh, the best noise, in, the best noise in the world. Best noise in the world. Um, uh, Philip, what do you think? Enjoyed the drams? It's been great to have you guys on. Thank you very much. Yep. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Gordon, Gordon and John. It's um hope to see you. We'll put the distillery at some point or well let's hope. Let's oh. hope in, yeah. Let's hope yeah, next year we're back in a, back in a sense of normality next year would be great from uh from uh, because Glen Goyne, when you go there, as you guys you know, as you guys know, as we all know, uh it's an amazing experience. The passion of everybody uh, at Glen Goyne is amazing. The the, the pride we're all proud of producing this wonderful whiskey um and uh it takes time and we really really focus on time throughout the whole process so um you know we hope everybody has enjoyed their drams bob sander we love you he says it's the best saturday since march Get in there, bob. <laughs> oh, there we go <laughs> there we go that's that's the there you can't you can't argue with that that's that's well that's we must all come to glen we'd love to see you love to see you all yeah, uh, in, the, in the new future um Let, at Glen Goyne in the face in the flesh. We'd love to see let's that. get back to assemblance. Oh, he's off again. Philip's off. Oh, he's back. There he is. Um, so I all I want to say is firstly to our American viewers, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, lots of pumpkin pie and Black Fridays and all that sort of thing. Um, to everybody else who's watching yep. 
if we don't sort of we wish you a great holiday period christmas um exactly um and uh to everybody who's been here tonight john we really really thank you for coming on oh, and fun, giving man. us your amazing insights into your job gordon dallas great to see you in the sauna um fantastic looking very I festive leave. i love you so just... uh, yeah <laughs> he's never leaves um uh he's like a dried grape by the end of it which is a raisin technically um Callum and Philip, thank you very much. Um, and really all I want to say to everybody is we hope you enjoyed the evening. We hope you enjoyed the drams. Thanks to our retail partners in Baruri Whiskey Shop, Abbey Whiskey, Nickel and Perks, and Aberdeen Whiskey Shop. All these drams are available from them, from us, on Glengoyne.com. Thank you very much. Good evening. And Slangeva. Slangeva. <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. You all right? 